and Rosa Parks by Brad Metzler. Read to you today by Gammy. I am Rosa Parks. Growing up, I was small for my age, and I was sick a lot too since we didn't have money for a doctor. But that didn't mean I was weak. When I was 11, as I was walking home from school, a boy on roller skates came zipping by and shoved me. He thought I'd be an easy target. To his surprise, I turned around and pushed him back. I knew fighting was wrong, but I didn't want him picking on me again. His mother saw what happened. She was mad that I had pushed him. But you know what made her even madder? I was black and her son was white. She immediately started yelling, I'll have you put in jail. You'll never get out again. No question it was scary. But my mother and grandfather taught me to respect myself and to respect others. So instead of backing down, I stood my ground and calmly but firmly I explained. Your son was the one who pushed me. I didn't bother him at all. I wasn't just standing up to that mom or even to the boy on the roller skates. I was standing up for myself. After that, the boy and his mom never bothered me again. Still, it's hard to change things. Sometimes it could take a long time. Back then, if you were black, you were treated unfairly just because of the color of your skin. You weren't allowed to live in the same neighborhood as a white person, eat at the same restaurant, ride the same elevator, or use the same bathroom. You couldn't even drink from the same water fountain. One was marked white and the other for colored. When I was little, I used to wonder if white water tasted different from the colored water. I even wondered if colored water came in lots of colors, but it didn't. The only difference was that I had to walk outside or even down the block to get mine. Of course, it just wasn't about water fountains. This was my school, a small old wooden building with one room and one teacher for all of us. Everyone from the five-year-olds to the sixth graders were stuffed in that one room. There were no windows, desks, and barely any books. Since most kids had to work on a farm to earn money, we only went to school five months during the year. Less school, hooray! Don't say hooray, that's bad. We also brought our books home every night. Why? Because we were worried that folks who hated the color of our skin would burn down our school. Now here's the school for the kids who were white. Notice the difference? It was a new brick building with beautiful windows, new desks, and plenty of books, plus a playground. They went to school nine months out of the year since they weren't working in the fields like we were. No, there's no hooray about this. Now, can we say hooray? Also, if you were black, you had to walk to school. If you were white, you got to take the bus. And the worst part was when I walk home with my brother, the kids on the bus would throw trash at us. It made me feel horrible. But there were no civil rights back then. The only solution was to move off the road. And really, what kind of solution is that? As I got older, things didn't change much. There's no room in here, lady. One winter, I was waiting for the local city bus. If you were black, you had to ride in the back. If you were white, you rode up front. On that day, the back of the bus was packed, but there were plenty of seats in the front. I was just trying to find a place to sit, but as I entered through the front door, what do you think you're doing? You need to get off and use the back door. Only whites can come in the front. I tried to explain that there was no room to get in through the back. The driver didn't care. He wanted me off the bus. He grabbed me by my coat sleeve. I dropped my purse near the front door. To pick it up, I sat in the front seat, a white seat. It made the driver madder than ever. That's it. Get off of my bus. That's what he called it, my bus, as if it were his. The bus wasn't his, though. It belonged to all of us. Still, that afternoon, the driver got his way. He kicked me off. See you soon. Oh, yes, you will. But I promise you, that wasn't the last time I faced that bus driver. From there, in addition to working as a seamstress, I started working to change things. At the end of ACP, we fought for fair laws and made sure that people's stories were heard. Tell me what happened next. I also stopped using colored water fountains. I'd rather go thirsty than be treated so poorly. Need a lift? No thanks. It was the same with separate elevators. Instead of riding them, I take the stairs. 
But as for real change, even I didn't know what was coming. It was the end of a busy Thursday. I was 42 years old and on the bus going home. This time, I was sitting in the first row of the seats that were allowed for black people. There was one man next to me and two women across from me. It was the same driver from before, the exact same one from all those years earlier. At the third stop, a few white people got on, filling up the rest of the empty seats. There was one white person left standing, so the driver told those of us in my row, Let me have those front seats. At first, none of us moved, but when he asked again, Y'all better make it light on y'all selves and let me have those seats. The other three people got up, but I stayed right where I was. Sliding over to the window, I thought about what he was demanding. He wanted to take my seat away. He wanted to give it to that man. And why? Come on, get up. Because I was black and the man was white. I knew what the rule said, but I also knew in my heart that that's not how you treat people. Without a doubt, the driver was mad. But I never lost my cool and never raised my voice. Are you going to get up? No. People say that the reason I refused to give up my seat was because I was tired. And I was. But it wasn't the kind of tired that came from making feet. The only tired I was was tired of giving in. Well, I'm going to have you arrested. You may go on and do so. Before me, there were other brave women who had refused to give up their seats. Still, on that day for violating the rules of Montgomery, Alabama, I got arrested. But by standing up for myself, I ignited a movement. From there, the Montgomery bus boycott began. For 381 days, that's well over a year, all black people in the city, and even a few whites, refused to ride the public buses. But if you don't use our buses, we'll go out of business. Then maybe you should think about changing your rules. Finally, the rules were changed. Public buses were no longer allowed to separate people based on the color of their skin. That was only the beginning. Eventually, we were allowed to drink from the same water fountains, ride the same elevators, and yes, go to the same schools. In the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson wrote that we're all created equal. Finally, the nation was starting to act like it. Of course, that didn't mean the fight was over. There were thousands of other people just like that bus driver. But after hearing how I did not give up my seat, there were now thousands more people just like me, together, inspired, and committed to justice. In my life, people tried to knock me down, tried to make me feel less than I was, They teased me for being small, being black, being different. Let me be clear, no one should be able to do that. But if they try, you must stand strong. Stand for what's right. Stand up for yourself, even if it means sitting down. And when you do, others will follow. I am Rosa Parks. I'm not a politician or a president or an actor or a famous business owner. I'm just an ordinary person. But I'm also proof that there's no such thing as an ordinary person. I hope you'll always stand up for yourself. And I hope you remember that we're all in this together. The end. We have so much more to learn. Be blessed.